two, and behold, there came a leper. Now let's look at this man, the leper, and see the condition of this person that met him there at that time. The leper, what does it mean to be a leper? Well, you know that leprosy was an incurable disease. Leprosy was a disease that brought death. Leprosy was a disease that uh, put you outside the camp, that separated you from everybody. And now here was a man that had already been before the priest. The priest had already diagnosed him as being a leper and now have set him outside the camp and he is not able to be around people. Turn to Leviticus chapter 13 just for a minute. Look at a couple of verses there because you can read about the leper in Leviticus 13 and 14. Leviticus 14 tells us about the rituals of the cleansing that when a leper is cleansed that he has to go through after he has been uh, cleaned. Now in chapter 13 of Leviticus, if you, if, if you will look in verse 45 and 46, this tells us the, uh, you know, some important things about what happened when a leper has now been declared with leprosy. He says in verse 45, And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, that I means he'll tear his clothes, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, he has to cover his mouth, and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. This is what he had to do after he had uh, been diagnosed by the priest that he was a leper. He had to uh, tear his clothes. He had uh, to uncover his head. He had to cover his mouth. And everywhere he went, he had to yell out, unclean, unclean, when anyone came near him. Look at verse 46. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Look at that. Dwell alone without or outside the camp shall be his habitation. You see here, from that point on, he was never, never able to really be around other folk. He was going to have to dwell alone. He was going to have to cry unclean every time he got around anyone. And he was going to have to wear the garments that were torn and all the things that would declare him or show to the people that he was a leper. Everyone that saw him was to uh, resist him. They were to stay away from him because he was unclean. And now he's heard about Jesus, amen, and he knows that Jesus is a little different than the rest of the priests. The priests didn't want to be around him. You see, they didn't want to have anything to do with him. You would never get a priest to approach a leper, but now he's heard about Jesus. Jesus has been up in the mountain. Jesus has been teaching. Jesus has been preaching. He's coming back, and now his faith is such that he can approach him and believe that he's able to to help him. Now look at his approach to Jesus there in the verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. But first, let's look at the condition of this man. Not only was he to be outside the camp, but the physical condition of his body would have been such that he would have been recognized if you were to look at him as being a leper. Because because you see, the, the, the body would produce a spongy, tumor-like uh, sores all over the body. And uh, it would also affect the internal organs. And you would have scaly uh, skin that, that would even, you could even smell leper when you were close to it. And you could even taste him if you got close to him. There would be an odor and a taste come from it. And his skin would lose its color and, and become scaly. His eyes would be empty. His eyelashes would fall out. And even his fingers and toes would drop off. Because, you see, the body, when the leprosy first comes on the body, you have a lot of pain. But then the body becomes numb and you're not able to feel. So when you injure your fingers or your toe, you don't realize it. And, and, and infection. 
protection will set up and they would drop off. So when you saw lepers, you saw people whose body parts had come off many times. And they may be missing fingers, they may be missing toes, or even feet or hands or limbs. And, and they looked so gruesome and awful. Well, look, and, and ugly people, nobody wanted to be around them. And they had to cry unclean. And here he was, and he comes up now to Jesus. And the Bible says the first thing that he did, he worshipped him. He worshipped him. That's a, a reverence, a respect, a homage. He, he came before him in a worshipful state. And then the Bible says, he said, Lord. He recognized him as Lord. And then he made a request. And he did not try to demand something from God. He requested something from God. He said, if thou will. Lord, if it's your will, if it's your will. I recognize that you're all powerful, that you're sovereign, that you're the one that's in control. I recognize you as Lord. I recognize you're the one to be worshipped. And I'm asking you, if it's your will, you can make me clean. Amen. His faith was realized there because he said, I know, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. I've got the faith. I've got the faith to believe that you can make me clean. Amen. Now look at what he asked. Look at what he asked. This is very important because this sheds a whole lot of light on the story. He didn't say, Lord, I know if you will, you can heal my body. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't say, I know, Lord, that you can help me uh, get my body parts back on. He didn't say that. He said, Lord, I know if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Amen. Because what he realized was that he was unclean. Amen. And that's the key. That's the key to salvation right there. That's the key. You see, the problem today, people want to come to Christ for everything, but to get their sin clean. Amen. They want to deal with everything but the sin question. And here, he said, Lord, I'm unclean. My problem is that I'm unclean. I can't go to the temple. I can't worship God. I can't fellowship with a Christian because I'm unclean. Amen. I need cleansing. That's what this world needs, folks. We've got enough of this easy stuff. We've got enough of this simple stuff. we got enough of this talk them in and baptize them in and, and get them in the church. We need some old time holy ghost drawing people to Christ where they realize they're lost. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And until you get a person lost, you can't get him saved. Yes. <laughs> Thank God he knew he was unclean. Yes. Yes. I've seen them today. They come forward all kind of ways. No brokenness. No contrite spirit. No poor in spirit. No mourning over their sin. But they want to come forward and they want God to accept them because God's getting a bargain when He gets me. Amen. And we somehow believe that God's getting something when He gets me. Well, this is the way we are, folks, just like that leper. Because leprosy is a type of sin. And the way that this leprosy affects the physical body is the way sin affects us spiritually because we are all unclean without Christ. Yes. Now you may have tried to clean up the outside like the Pharisees. You see, the Pharisees cleaned up the outside, but it was the inside that needed cleaning. He said, you've cleaned up the outside of the cup. You've painted sepulchers white. But inside, you haven't done anything about what's inside. Amen. Because you can paint a tomb, but inside there's nothing but death. Amen. And bones and corruption. Because inside is what needs to be changed. And until that's changed, you'll still be in your seat. You're still unclean. So the problem is today in the churches, We've got a lot of folks unclean that's in the church pretending to be clean. They've got the outside fixed up and they put everything on that looks good. They, they made people think they're religious. They have done everything they know to do to make others believe they're religious. But inside, they're still filthy and depraved and unclean. And only Jesus can do anything about that. Amen. Only Jesus can do anything about that. 
see, what I learned a long time ago really helped me better than anything. And that is I can't change people. I can't do anything for people. The only thing I can do is show them Jesus and point them to Jesus and tell them who can do something for them. And then when they come to Him, they'll be changed. There'll be a difference. So He said, Lord, if you will, if you will, if you will, if it's your will, Lord, if you will, you make me clean. You make me clean. Not just heal my body. You make me clean. Amen. You can make me ready for church. You can make me ready the fellowship. You can make me ready to worship. Amen. If you will, you can do that. Yes. Now look at how Jesus responded to him there. Verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand. Yes. And that blesses me. That blesses me. Mm -hmm. He never had no priest to go out and lift, put his hand out and touch that leper. He ain't had no, no good Christian reach out and touch that leper. No, I might, he might infect me. Amen. I might get something from him. He's not going to do that. But here's the Lord. The Lord of glory. Amen. Pure righteousness. The one that's undefiled. The one that's pure. When he reaches out his hand and he touches that old leper that hadn't had a touch in probably years. No one has touched him in years. And now here comes the Lamb of God to do God's glory. Come over that mountain and he walks up to it and he reaches out his hand and he lays it on that old leper. And he says, I will, I will, I will be So if you want to come to him and get anything done, you better come to him dirty. Recognizing you're dirty. And then he'll clean you. Amen. He'll clean you when you recognize you're dirty. And you need cleaning. But oh, folks, until the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you and shows you you're lost, you'll never get saved. Because that's the only people that get saved are them that's poor in spirit. They realize they have nothing. They're baggers, they're paupers. They have nothing to offer Christ. And He has everything. And we present ourselves to Him. And He is able to cleanse us Amen. and make us whole. Amen. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. I get stirred. It's all right. You know, I wouldn't give you a dime. For salvation don't affect your emotions. <laughs> Did you know salvation? is in all three parts. The intellect, you must believe. You must intellectually believe. The emotions and the will. All three of those are affected when you come to Christ. And you never get over it. Amen. It affects you all the rest of your life. That's why when Brenda's saying, I lift my hands oh, yes. and almost will just get up and, and just do this. And, and say, praise God. Because you sang about that very thing, Brenda, right there. Give me a clean heart. Amen. That's what we need. We got enough intellectuals. Amen. We need a clean heart. Somebody that can show me. He said, I will Hallelujah. be thou clean. He didn't say be healed. He said, be thou clean. Be thou clean. Because here's the thing. Man's problem is not physical. Man's problem is not emotionally. Although we run every psychiatrist or psychologist and, and everything we can think of trying to cure us emotionally because we got all these psychological problems now that man has created. You know, he didn't have all them until you got all these Sigma Freud, did you? Until he came out with all his ideas. You didn't have that problem. But now you've got all that. So everybody's got a psychological problem. We need a psych, psychiatrist. And, and, and 